we're going to give you a little starting exercise to get you uh, imaginative, get you active. Uh, Harry, this is a surprise for you. I've used it a couple of times in a lesson, in some lessons, and it seems to go down well. But as I said, you've got to use your imagination. Are you ready for that? Imagination? Well, so I've got to be, like, creative. That's right, that's right. So, okay. So you are, for example, this fella. I'm going to show you a picture. Oh, wow. He's very attractive. Okay. Yeah. Guys, you're this, you're this person. Okay. And married to him is me. I'm you're married wife. to that old man. I'm his wife. So imagine whoever his wife is, but I'm her for now. Okay. And uh, I've been worried sick. I've been very worried all morning, all night and all morning, because you didn't return home last night. You were meant to come home oh. around 7 or 8 p.m., but I've been up all night worrying sick about you. You are this person. Player, and, absolute player. And finally, around 10 a.m., you come back and I say, well, where the hell have you been? And you've got to tell me, where have oh, you been? I like that. I like that. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. teachers. Real Teachers. We rudely interrupt your viewing experience because you absolutely have to get our brand new free ebook and audiobook that will help anyone dramatically improve their IELTS speaking score. Click the link in the top right corner of the screen now or find it in the description box below. Back to your viewing experience in three, two, one. I've got to think of excuses. Where have I been? It could be excuses. It could be a real story. It could be his uh, honest yeah. answer. Okay, right. What but do you think, what... guys? Where have I been? Me being a 83-year-old gentleman named Harold. Harold. Okay. <laughs> Inventive. I'll yeah. See, I can't wait to hear your answer. But for them, it could be for them. Like, that is that them. That is their life. Oh, uh, that's As you. this person. Okay, yeah. get your get your stories in. Uh, thank you for this, by the way, Kareen. Breathe deep, Harry. And actually, I have been doing some uh, deep breathing this morning to relax me. So thank oh, you, yeah. Wim Hof. Um, absolutely. So okay, so I've gone out. Um, what what time did I leave the house? By the well, way? you left for work actually, and I was expecting you home around seven p.m. <laughs> for dinner. Why yeah, is this guy still working? He's way <laughs> too old to be working. He should have retired decades ago. Well, that's, you know, that's that's the problem you get when you're a headmaster at a very stressful school. You age very fast. Oh, I see. So I'm a headmaster. <laughs> Why am I still working? He's that's... got a tie on. He's, a pub... he's been working. Hey, I, yeah, that's true. Well... That or he's been at a funeral, a very upbeat <laughs> funeral. Uh, but I like that you said worried sick. You were worried sick. So Charlie was very worried. He was worried sick, as you would be. Um, so, well, after school, I went out. I went out with some of the, the younger teachers because, you know, I like to hang around with the newly qualified teachers. There's a lovely new teacher named Julie. Uh, she teaches Spanish. And um, yeah, we go out together and just go for a couple of drinks. There's a local tapas restaurant nearby. And we just talk about Spain, Spanish things. We, we had a great time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So that would equal to what? 9, 10 p.m.? Why on earth didn't you come home after that? Um, so, so did I get back at 10 a.m.? Yes. Oh, oh, right. You spent well, the night out. Yeah, well, I'm glad you asked that, actually, love. Um, I, so we had, we had a few too many, let, let's just say. We had a few too many. And, um, well, one thing led to another, and we ended up in a late-night casino, uh, which was supposed to be closed because, you know, uh, everything's meant to shut at 10 p.m. at the moment in, in London. 
Uh, but so we went to the casino and Julie put a hundred pounds on black and uh, the bet came in. The bet came in. So the bet was successful. And so we had 200 pounds to spend. Um, so we went to the local news agents, a local supermarket. <laughs> we were, it was a crazy night. We were already quite drunk. Um, Julie got some drugs. Some Julie got herself some <laughs> drugs. I, didn't, I did not partake. I did not take part in the drug taking. But can Julie we just, was... Can we just stress that your first, sen your first sentence was lovely? Like, you can use that. I did partake. Ah, I did partake. Yeah, no, I like I like that as well. Yeah, I didn't participate. I didn't partake. Um, so Julie was, she was, you know, sniffing everything, drinking everything. She's crazy. And she is not a one pint wonder. She can drink all night long. And so, yeah, I ended up getting a, a room in a travel lodge, like a cheap hotel. Uh, I just thought, I didn't want to wake you, darling. I didn't want to wake you. So you're telling me that you spent the whole evening and night with this lovely new woman that teaches Spanish. And I know from your history, whenever we go on Spanish holidays, I know what you're like. You're lying there on the sun lounger with your sunglasses down, but your, your eyes are very, very quickly... They're, they're moving around far too much. And then they suddenly stop and stare at something. Not sure what. But yes, I know your history. I know what you're like with Spanish ladies. And you're telling me it was all innocent? It was. It was perfectly innocent. It was perfectly... I'm someone who's interested uh, in the human form. Um, all different shapes. That's why when I'm on the beach, I'm always looking around. I'm always admiring you know beautiful things not so beautiful things just having a nice time so when i went out with judy it was totally innocent she's half my age she is half my age she is 41 and a half 83 83 yes uh, yes exactly i'm 80 <laughs> there you go real maths with real teachers god that would be an awful live show oh wouldn't <laughs> imagine it? that hang on i just get my calculator oh phone's dead um we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> yeah awful absolutely awful um but yeah so it was perfectly innocent sorry i'm back late but here we go so we okay. actually got a couple of stories in do you want to have Fantastic. a look before we take a look at those stories we're going to take the chance to tell you about the language learning app called Cambly, which is this video's sponsor. Now, as many of our followers already know, Cambly are an online language school where you can take one-to-one -one language lessons with native English teachers and practice your speaking skills or even prepare for your exams at the click of a button without booking far in advance, which is super convenient, especially as you can take the lesson on your clever little phone. Now, one more thing you might not be aware of is that most of the tutors on Cambly can actually speak the student's mother tongue, be it Chinese, Spanish, French, you name it, which is very useful for less advanced students. And we all know there are lots of language learning apps out there, not to mention some bloody good ways to learn English on, on Netflix, on YouTube, and more recently, even podcasts. But Cambly aren't suggesting to use their app over these resources, as they are indeed focused on helping you practice your speaking skills. And we've said it many times, and I'll say it again, there is a clear difference between passively learning a language and actively learning a language. Active learning falls under writing, speaking, or, or generally creating language. And that is where Cambly can really help. So keep enjoying the online resources out there for the passive part of your studies, but bring that knowledge to life by getting an affordable subscription with Cambly. Because as they say, use it or lose it. And uh, talking of their subscriptions, if you use our code REALTEACHERS10, 
you can get up to 32% discount on their annual subscriptions. And we've also been given a delightful present to give one of you lucky learners. So in this episode, we asked for you to write an example story of where you, as an old man, have been all night. And uh, we will be giving the person who writes the best story a code for 60 free minutes on Cambly, which you can use at any moment of the day. And all you need is your phone and some internet. It's brilliant. We will be announcing the winner of the 60 minutes of free credit on Instagram on the 25th of November. So get your comments in. Uh, you'll, you'll score points um, on imagination, usage of phrases taught in this video, and comical style. So if you like the sound of Cambly, check out the link in the description box and get active with your studies. But let's carry on with the video. For you guys quickly who are new here, I don't know if I still have the picture, yes I do. This person went missing for a whole night and he's coming back to his wife and his wife says, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> where the hell have you been? You're 83. <laughs> you should be in bed, unable to get up. All right, have you got your eye on one? <clears throat> Meaning, have you found one that you like? Have you got your eye on a, 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 a story, Harry? A corker. Uh, I haven't. I actually haven't, um, despite being very keen to get, get <laughs> onto them. Have, have you seen? Well, there, there are lots, though. I'm sure they're all good. <laughs> there are a lot. There are a lot. Um, I'm b a bit biased, and I want to uh, choose my current student, Karen's. So I'm oh, going to yeah. do that. Harold was waiting for his dinner when he had a spark of imagination. He felt the urge to go out in search of fairies. And his search took him to the nearby beach where he met a mermaid and had wonderful conversations in mermaid English. He lost track of time and finally came back home when the mermaid decided that she was too hungry to go on chattering. <laughs> It's actually not that. It's actually not that dissimilar from the truth. What actually happened? You Are know? you saying that the truth is what you said? Yeah. You know, we we were drinking and we were speaking some form of English. It was kind of like mermaid English. Yeah. And so um, Julie, the teacher, the Spanish teacher for the mermaid, and it's the same. Yeah. Exactly. We did. Lo we did lose track of time. Which Karen is a lovely, lovely expression to lose track of time. Or yeah phrase um meaning you well you 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 was you enjoyed something so much that you just forgot about time and it and the time flew it's one of those expressions that is better not explained <laughs> it's our job it's it is our job that. it is our job <laughs> <laughs> you're right this, this phrase does. guys this phrase is better to not be explained. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about the meaning. Just yeah. next. Welcome to the video, guys. Today I'm going to do the top five idioms in British English. I'm not going to explain them because they're better not explained. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, so amazing, Karen. I didn't spot an error. Harry, did you spot any errors? Apart from no. maybe a double R with Harold? Uh, no, I'd write Harold with a with a single R. No, yeah, no, definitely. I love that. Felt the urge, like the the need or the desire to go. That's really nice English. Very nice English. Definitely not mermaid English. No, no certainly go. not. Yeah. Well done, Karen. Thank you for that. Really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so we've got one from Balkis. Do you remember Balkis? Charlie? Yes. Balkis. I think I think I yeah, he doesn't remember Balkis. <laughs> I, I do. I think I spoke with Balkis on Skype once. Um Me too. she's from a country in Africa, which I don't remember. Uh, she was gonna come on an immersion course. Anyway, hello Balkis, how are you? Hope you're well. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for still being a follower. Love you. Um I've been out chilling with my mates and then it took us forever 
to leave there. And it was 2 a.m. after we left there. Oh, you stayed out late. So there were no, there was no buses. So there I'd say there were no buses. There were no buses that I could take at that time. I stayed with my friend house. I'd say I stayed at my friend's house. Friends with an apostrophe. I stayed at my friend's house. Yeah, I don't believe you, Balkis. I don't believe you. Where were you really, you liar? <laughs> Calling her a liar? <laughs> no, I believe you. I believe you. So, yeah, just chilling with her mates or his mates, given mm. the example. Well, you could say you were, you were hanging out. You were hanging out with your mates. You could do. Yes. Yeah. Um, took us forever to leave there. And it was 2 a.m. after we left there. Yeah. So there were no buses. Yeah. We got to the bus stop too late, you could say, in a di just a different different way of saying it. We got to the bus stop bus stop too late. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. I arrived at the bus stop too late. So mm -hmm. I crashed at my friend's house. So I had to crash at my friend's house. Yeah. Yeah, I crashed. That's really nice. I crashed at my friend's house. So this is quite informal English. Um, you could say, oh, like say you are out, you miss your bus and you, you know, a friend lives nearby. You could say, Hey, Julie, uh, could I crash at yours? I'm, uh, I'm out just, uh, in the rain, you know, standing at the bus stop and there's no bus coming. Can I crash at yours, babe? Are you calling Julie babe? Yeah, but we're just friends. We just, that's what we do. You never call me babe. Oh, come on. We're not going over this again. Come on. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Balkis. That was a wonderful uh, entry. And I'm scrolling for more. I see Reza is live. Re Reza! Reza! Reza is alive. Sorry. <laughs> Reza <laughs> is alive and live. Unless we've just lost him and he's just had a fatal heart attack, which I hope he hasn't. Um, but I love it. I love it with seeing Reza, these, these names that used to come to our live lessons. What a joy. Absolutely lovely to see you. So nice to have you back. I've got one uh, from Aliyah. Is that how you say uh, A liar. A liar. Let's hear from this liar. <laughs> I, I would say Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Probably, probably, yeah. Apologies, <laughs> Aaliyah. I'm calling you a liar already. All right, Harold. Um, Harold was busy. <laughs> Harold was busy planning for their 50th anniversary and fell asleep on the new apartment where he was planning the party. Oh, my heart sings out to Harold. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, Just a quick right. one. Um, and fell asleep um, at the new apartment uh, where he was planning the party. Yeah, that's the only bit, I would think. Harold was busy planning for their 50th anniversary. Yeah, just the preposition on to at. Yeah. yeah. I think that's quite a good excuse. Quite a good excuse. If Harold does have a sec, uh, you know, another apartment to crash at. Uh, yeah, but it does it does suggest that sh he's now got to give her this massive anniversary <laughs> gift, which I assume is the apartment, this new apartment. He's bought her an apartment for the 50th anniversary. <laughs> yeah, little does she know, he actually s slept at a bus stop. Or at, back at Julie's again. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's obviously back at back at Julie's. Who was? Who, who, who would have done that? Julie, God, she's awful, isn't she? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, have we got any more? Uh, we have one from... No, that's not one from Reza. We've got one from Natalia Voronina, who I, I could never pronounce your name correctly, Natalie, but nice to... Lovely to see you. Um, so Natalie's, well, Natalia has said... He met people in black, and the only thing he could remember is a very bright, bright flash. 
I met people in black, and the only thing you can remember is a very bright flash. Natalie, oh. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm this maybe, is... maybe he was mugged. Is that the situation? He was mugged, like a group of people um, violently attacked him for his money. Yeah. And he was knocked out. He was knocked out. He was knocked unconscious. And, that, and, and the last thing he remembers woke up is that. At Julie's. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he always wakes up at Julie's, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But I like that. Um, good use of the preposition in as well. People in black, meaning they were wearing black. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, because like you could men think in black. Men, the men in black. Yeah, here come the men in black. And the men in black too. Another great film. Yeah, why not? Why not watch the sequel? Why not watch the sequel? So yeah, thank you for that, Natalie. Um, a disturbing memory for Harold, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh no, you, again. When I'm did you sorry. do it the first time? A I liar. Uh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Aaliyah. If you're going to mispronounce someone's name, though, that's the worst mispronunciation because you're calling her a liar. We've got, we've got a, um, a question in from an absolute liar. So thank yeah. you so much for showing love and coming down, guys. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's been lovely. It's been we lovely. have. We've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it. Yes, joint effort. No. Yeah, it's been really nice. Thank you very much. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. A huge amount of vocabulary there, wasn't there? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to flash it up and review it quickly? Um, I can tell you're going to go for a no. <laughs> no, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We rudely interrupt your viewing experience because you absolutely have to get our brand new free ebook and audiobook that will help anyone dramatically improve their IELTS speaking score. Click the link in the top right corner of the screen now or find it in the description box below. Back to your viewing experience in three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Something I'm very worried about or I am worried sick about. Worried, very worried. <laughs> Yeah, very worried. Yeah. <laughs> the wife was very worried about where her husband went. And uh, she hoped that he had not had too, a few too many, meaning a few too many alcoholic drinks. I, I think it always means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have a few too many. I had one or two many drinks that made me hung over the next day. Mm -hmm. I had a few too many. So you don't need to say drink. I had a few too many. Uh, one thing led to another very common thing that we say when you unexpectedly ended up doing something you didn't necessarily plan to do. Normally yes. it's cheating when you cheat or, or no, if you maybe have sexual intercourse with someone, you didn't plan on doing it. Oh, one thing led to another. And then we, we were yes. in bed. Yes. And, Ju and Julie's back in action. Yeah, so one thing led to another, but this could be to do with socialising. You go for a pub, um, a, a beer at the pub, and then before you know it, you're on the dance floor in the local club until 2 or 3 a.m. Oh, I don't know what happened, just one thing led to another. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Next one. Yeah, uh, the bet came in. That means the bet was successful. So you placed a bet, and then the bet came in. It was successful and I won money. The bet came okay. in. Yes. Uh, Harry said that he didn't partake in uh, the, the, the drug consumption or in ha having some drugs. He didn't partake in it, meaning he didn't take part. Didn't take part. Didn't participate. Nice. Um, someone can drink all night long. So you could say this with any verb, couldn't you? Sorry. She can dance all night long. It means she can dance all night. All night long. Julie can dance and drink and take drugs all night long. Gosh, she's, she sounds hard to handle. Yeah, so I think that brings us to the end of this lesson. This has been a lot of fun, guys, and it's so nice to see so many comments. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Harry. It was lovely. Really, really lovely. Thank you, Charlie. I really enjoyed it, man. It was lovely. High five. See you guys soon. Lots of love.
Much love. Bye. -bye. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram to get more day-to-day -day posts and stories helping you learn English in more dynamic and interactive ways. Uh, by the way, guys, if you hadn't noticed, this video was recorded live a couple of weeks before this video was published. And it ran for over 90 minutes. So we've decided to split it up into more digestible content for you over the next couple of weeks. But if you did miss the live, then make sure you have subscribed, clicked the little bell next to it, and allowed YouTube to notify you in your settings on your phone. Then you should be good to go and be reminded when we are going live. Remember, to check out Cambly and comment under the video to get a chance to win that 60 minutes of free credits to get active with your language learning and grab our ebook and audiobook that will help dramatically improve your IELTS speaking score. That's all for now. Get out of here, you. See you next time on Real English with Real Teachers. <laughs>